Welcome everyone. This is the FX Masters program, lesson six. This video is going to be quite short because I want to just uh, solve a couple of issues that we had on the previous uh, previous lesson before I end it. If you haven't seen it, then please watch lesson five. And if you if you've seen it, then you remember that at the end, uh, right at the end of the lesson, we discovered that we had um, that we had this issue. With these particles, uh, when we turn them to streaks, then you can see that they were uh, kind of shooting out in all directions, and you know, go lo looking looking so large like that. Remember that a streak is a particle that will be uh, its its size or its length is going to depend on the speed that they have. So the moment, uh, as soon as I see this kind of stuff, it's telling me that these particles are moving a lot faster than the others. So in this little short video, I just want to. Uh, fix this issue and then move on to the next lesson. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit or let's continue talking about debugging. Debugging, I think to me, is one of the most important things for an FXTD. The ability of, of um, remaining calm and, and finding uh, logical solutions, it is you know pretty much what we get paid for. Um, so first thing, as soon as, as soon as you see something like that, then you know, you need to start asking yourself a few questions or, or, or at least starting to, to think about a couple of things. Um, then if, if you know for a fact that the, the streak is a particle that gets longer with speed, um, then if, if, this, if these guys are so large, so long, right, especially this guy, um, it tells you that this guy is moving really quickly. Now, we need to figure out why. Also, it's telling you in the direction where it's moving because you can see the streak is uh, the opacity of the streak is higher here than at the end. So think of it like a, almost like a like a comet. So it's telling you that it's going in this in this direction over there towards the beginning of the surface. If you remember, uh, let's just show the surface of the emitter. Sorry, there we go. All right, so it's moving towards the beginning of the surface. Remember, the particles are being born on this side. Just recap, see what we have. We have that. Okay, so the particle is going somewhere from here and it's going all the way back there and then moving forward. Well, we don't know for a fact that it's moving forward, but we know for sure that it's going from the end of the surface towards the beginning of the surface. So let's, let's figure it out why. Um, if you render this with. Um, Arnold, which is now the default render for Maya. Let me just load it. If you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm basically loading Arnold as a render. I'm not. I'm not uh, very familiar with it. I used it a little bit on uh, Gravity back in the early days of Arnold, so, you know, uh, does, they, they, get, they got rid of Mentor Ray and they got Arnold in, so I need to start figuring out, you know, what's so special about this. Um, but for now, this MTOA is basically Maya to Arnold uh, plugin. So I'm just going to load that, and then now Arnold will show on my list. Now, Arnold, uh, right away, right off the, you know, of box, like they say, it will render. Um, <laughs> it's awesome, you see. I, I don't like. I don't like when they do kind of stuff like that. They get rid of mentor ray, which is a perfectly fine render, and then they add this thing. And then when you hit render with a streak, it tells you that streak particles are not supported yet. So I don't know why they added that. But anyway, um, if you switch them to points, which I've seen that rendering points. Right, there's a bit uh, dark in here, but if you see the um, alpha channel, then you see the points and you don't see the long streaks. Okay, um, let me just re-render using the proper camera. Okay, so this is my alpha channel. Of course, it's rendering the plane. I'll get rid of it in a second. What I wanted to show you, yeah. Let me just get rid of this. render again. I'm looking at the alpha channel because it's the easiest thing. I haven't done any lighting or anything so 
I, I don't want to get into that those topics. Um, what I do want to say is that if you see the points on the screen, then there is no long streaks. Could be because there's no motion right, motion blur. Let's turn it on. We'll do it again. You can see that even with motion blur turned on, okay, no uh, long streaks are being shown. So that uh, that you know, for you guys, if you're going to be rendering with Arnold, um, or if the render of your choice, if you hit render and everything is fine, then by all means, just ignore what's coming. That's what I've done all my career. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've used this technique many times. I've seen that kind of effect, that kind of glitch, let's say, with those long streaks showing up. But if my render doesn't take it, then it's not a problem. It's really, it shouldn't be a problem for us unless we are using the Maya hardware render. Now, with Maya hardware, is a different story. If you set it to points, then it's fine. But if you set them to streaks, then you will see the error. So right here. Okay, with streaks because definitely, you know, with my my hardware, then you get you're grabbing whatever is on the screen, whatever just as it is. So yeah, you can definitely see the mistake. So if you're gonna go with the Maya hardware render, then we need to fix this. Again, if you're gonna go with Arnold or Renderman or something different, um, then it might not be a problem. But you still need to know why this is happening. And uh, at least uh, I will take this lesson as a lesson on debugging of uh, situations like this. So like I said before, these particles are definitely moving faster. They're moving from somewhere in the end, so this section of the, the emitter, towards the beginning. And I want to know what happens to them if um, after that. Right? So I'm just going to go and pick this guy and go one frame forward. And you can see that he's now right here. The next frame is right there. I don't know if you can see it. But here's my guy. And now, if I go one frame forward, he's behaving correctly. So it's just like a couple of frames. Let's just pick another one. Let's pick this guy. Okay, let's go one frame forward, and he behaves. So it's, this kind of tells me, let's just make sure that it's just tested one more time. Let's go one frame forward. There you go. So they misbehave for one or two frames. When I say misbehave is because, you know, we, if you remember from, from the previous lesson, then we had an expression here, making sure the particles are not born towards this section of the, of the plane. Again, I'm going to bring it back up. All right, so we have an expression. Uh, we can go and look at it, just to recap from last week. I need to get a new mouse because this one that I'm using is just uh, the right the right mouse, the right button is just failing sometimes. So it does some funky stuff. So I'm just apologizing in advance if you see some weird behavior. It's just my mouse that is not behaving. Um, okay, so this is uh, the expressions that we have from last week. Um, we had one in particular, which is this, which is basically saying that if the particles in the V position are greater than whatever I have in my control, which in this case, it is for the gold V kill, right? It's something like that. Uh, swarm kill V is 0.95. No, uh, it's on the view 0.4. Right, so swarm born in V is 0.4. That's the value that I'm using. So let's go back and select the shape node. There you go. Um, so I'm saying here uh, that if the particles in V are greater, okay, the position in V are greater than whatever I have on my locator, which is 0.4, then no life is given to them. Otherwise, is 10 the value. So that's why I'm saying that they're misbehaving because they should have no business in this area, especially not at the beginning of frame one. So in frame one, look at look what's happening. There's a whole bunch of them are being born right and they're moving somewhere towards the end for what I can see right again for the debugging side of things remember that we had each one of these divisions on the plane it, it was equivalent to 10% of the surface right 
So this, this should be the line of point 0.1, the line of point 0.2, point 0.3, and point 0.4. For what I can see here, no particles are being born at that, uh, past this line because even though the line is long, right, it means that the, the particle is already you know, behind point 0.4. That's the beginning of the particle right there. So I'm just going to just use my other mouse. Okay, so this particle, even though the line is very long, is behind point 0.4. So it's definitely not being born past this point. So that the expression at that point is working well. So why are they jumping like that? Why are they doing this kind of stuff? If you look at it from the side, it does have a bit of an inclination. We don't, we don't have an angle. So it's almost telling me, if I look at it from the top, that it's coming from from that side of the surface and it's crossing over to this side or something like that. And it looks like all of them, right, have some sort of rotation. They're not straight lines. See? So all of them seem to have something. So the issue must be coming from other direction other than, you know, than the, this uh, V position. For what I believe, okay, what this could be is caused by the gold offset that we're using. Remember that the gold offset is uh, uh, responsible for putting, placing particles away, right, from one side and the other side of the surface um, to give them thickness. That's what we're using for thickness, right? So that could be the reason. So let's go ahead and explore. I'm gonna grab my particles again. Jesus. All right. Um, Let's go to the shape node to get to the particles, I mean to the expressions, I'm sorry. And let's start debugging a little bit. Um, first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to grab my gold offset and I'm going to ignore that expression. So there's a lot, some, you know, one thing that I haven't told you yet that if you want to ignore or skip, might I have to skip one of these lines of code, then you basically grab the so at the beginning of the line that you want to skip, then you're going to place double slash like that. So that tells Maya to jump over that line. So don't, it's not going to say do anything about the goal offset. Let me just make sure that I don't have another mention to that in anywhere in my... Okay. So the only time I'm talking about goal offset is here. So I'm going to skip that and see what it does. Okay, so I can see that they're still, they're still freaking out. I can see there still, still has some sort of thickness. It looks like, well, even though most of the particles are on top of the surface, it still seems like there is some sort of, you know, the ones that are having the, the created the problem, they're definitely coming from an angle. Let's try something else. Skip that. Put this. Well, if you don't want to lose your line of code because you, know, you like it and you, might, you, might, you think you may want to use it, just copy it. Skip over this one and put your new line, right? So let's just say that this is zero. Okay, still creating a problem. Now, one thing that I, um, th 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 that's definitely my fault, you know, th th right now, you know, as you can see, I'm just trying things. And that's not a good, bad, that's not a bad thing right now that's not a bad thing for you at home and that's not a bad thing at work you need to try stuff you know we're not a uh, almighty uh, we know everything at the beginning of everything you know at some point we're going to have uh, we're going to need some help from someone or we're going to need some time to figure it out what i think you should get the most out of you know this class and the, this is this type of situations is that you need to figure it out how do we work the problem out okay what steps do we follow what what things you know for sure, right? And what things you're gonna experiment a little bit on. So this is perfectly fine. Like I always say in my lessons, you know, I don't really when I was learning these things, I never liked those tutorials where people just had everything prepared and perfect. That's not the way it works. It's horrible. So let's go together and figure this out together. So what I'm doing here, I'm just saving the line of code that I had. I'm making sure that Maya knows that I don't want any offset by setting that to zero. 
All right, there's still some problems. More problems or less problems? I don't know. Let's just see. Okay, I see a lot of lines. We can try. We can try something and see where the problem comes from. If we put this to ten and give it a lot of offset, let's see if that changes anything. So we move the problem up in a way, ten units. And you can you can really tell, right? The particles are being born on the surface and they're just shooting out to meet the goal right here. It's weird because you know this is some particles will do it, some will, won't do it, and, and it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of weird, this thing. All right, so no worries. We continue to test. We can see, you, know, you can definitely see from this image here that, you know, what the gold offset does. So these are 10 units away. Now, the gold offset, for what I understand, and that's something that, I, that could be my mistake from last week. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim it as my mistake, but I don't really think it is a mistake. But... Um, the gold offset, uh, for what I understand, is, is going to take a vector. A vector meaning it's a, it's a three number, the x, a position in x, y, and z. So it's going to need all three channels in order to, um, to put a particle away from a surface. So if I say, if, if it's expecting three digits, okay, or a, or a vector, and I'm just feeding one number, supposedly Maya is supposed to take this, this number and use that in all channels, x, y, and z. But if we, because we're testing it, because things are obviously have a problem, then we need to try and force it. So how do I feed that that value? Um, how do I feed a vector in here? Well, you know, you could do uh, the, the easiest thing. You know, you know that there is an expression called random that we have used it right here, right here, right here. We use it a lot, right? But random gives you back a float, just one number. So if I put random in here, okay, and I randomize this number like we're doing in this expression, okay, then I'm feeding just the number. If my is expecting a vector and that's the cause of this problem, then we need to figure out a way to give a random vector instead of a random number. And giving a random vector is very simple. It's very, very simple. All you need to do is add three letters to this, SPH, from sphere. So this is probably you, you could remind you can remember this for the future as a, let's say a spherical random. We call it SFRAN. and that is just another express another uh, um, sorry another variable built in into Maya, just like random, but instead of returning a float meaning a single number, it's going to return a vector. And this friend works the same way as the random. We will need a low number, let's say zero, and one, for example. So the difference between this expression and let's say this one, right? Is that this one would return just a float from zero to one. This one would return a vector, meaning three random numbers from zero to one for x, y, and z. Okay, let's try this. Let's just use that expression. Hit edit, rewind, and play. And we seem to have here a little bit of a problem. Let's say, we'll see what the error says. Well, there's a problem on the creation expression, no worries. Let's just see, see what we wrote here. Okay, everything's fine. Yeah, I don't see any problems. Let me just do this. You see the error goes away. I was saving that for later. You know, I usually, I usually, you know, that I try to show you the long way and then the short way of writing code. Um, but friend, for example, I was going to tell you, yeah, you can you can put zero and one as a minimum, or like I said here, you can see what I did here. I put just random and then just one, and I told you last week that Maya would just take as the low number being the zero and then this one. Well, this friend works the same way. For some reason, Maya doesn't like that I put zero comma one. This is the same thing. It will give me a random number, a random vector from zero to one. So it's fine. But still, I see the same thing. 
So the problem could be the gold offset or maybe something else plus the gold offset. So what else can we try? Well, there's one thing missing here. That in most cases, like I said, if I'm just working with points, which is usually the case, I'm not trying to wash my hands of the problem at all. And, and this is a proof that I'm just doing another lesson just for this. But in all honesty, I never render streaks outside because uh, even with render man, with anything that you're going to be using in production, uh, you can actually just saw it yourself uh, with Arnold for Maya. Um, streaks are just, uh, I use them a lot just for play blasting and for visualizing things in the viewport. That's very cool. It's almost, I, to make my mind, I use it almost like a, like a hardware motion blur in the viewport kind of thing. But it, it's, a, it's a good way to present the particles. Um, but in all honesty, when you're gonna render that as points, uh, when you're gonna render your particles, you will be using points pretty much all the time. A point with motion blur is a streak. And it's, it's much better, the calculation and the look of it is much better if you just render as points. So if you render as points, the problem will be gone. And there's all these things that I'm saying is just useless. Okay, but let's say that you need to render streaks for some reason. So there's one thing missing that I usually don't put it because it's not really necessary for what I'm doing, but um, there is one attribute on the particle that we can place. Let me go back to the swarm shape. All right, so there's one more attribute, uh, but two more attributes that we can add here. As you can see, we have gold U and gold V, and we talked about that in the last lesson. But there's one more. If you grab the general tab, and you go to the particle menu, there are two attributes here that we can use. It's called parent U and parent V. And parent U and parent V are basically the, is the emitter given the particle, uh, the, the position where they're born. It's like you tell, you talk to your parents, hey, where was I born? Well, you were born in this address, all right? In this particular place. Well, this is the same thing. These two attributes will tell the particle where, where the position where it was born. And it's, it, it could be a good practice if you use one, you know, to, to add that to your workflow, to add those things, though they would never hurt. And it's something, you know, so, so the particle gets located. I'm just thinking of those two attributes because I can see that the particles have an issue at the beginning. Finding themselves and then knowing where they're going, they seem, they seem lost, right? They seem, they seem out, of, out of place. So they're kind of born over there, but they want to be here. So and it seems like it's just at the beginning because as, as, as you saw, if we follow the particle, then it's going to be fine, right? Um, there was a funny thing I'm thinking right now, you know, as I as I talk to you, that I have to record these classes in Spanish as well. So I'm gonna have to make the same mistakes. <laughs> I'm recording the English ones first. Uh, I need to make the same mistakes in Spanish to make it, uh, well, to make it, you know, balance with, with your classes. That's funny. The question is, am I gonna pretend to be surprised or am I gonna? That's a question. That's a good thing. Anyway, uh, back to the back to the topic. Um, these two guys. If you grab them and you hit add, my Jose, oh, it added them. <laughs> All right, I was, I was expecting something, something else. But it could, at home, it could happen, right? It will happen that if you try to add the attribute, it will give you an error. It will tell you, no, I cannot do that. And why you cannot do that? If it tells you that, okay? If it says an error, says you cannot add those attributes, don't freak out. Grab your emitter, okay? Grab your shape, I mean, the emitter for, for the particles, and then go under the basic emitter attributes, and there is an option here that says need parent U and V. Actually, before I click that, I want to show you something. If you grab the particles, if you go to the swarm shape and you try to use those attributes, let's say that we're going to put an expression here. And you say, but what, can, what kind of expression can you put if you just told me that this attribute is just from the emitter to the particles to tell them where they were born? Well, it is perfectly true. And the only expression that I've, all, I, I use with this attribute I, all my life has always been something like this. I say gold U is equal parent U. And gold V is equal to parent V. What am I trying to say here? Sorry, I'm missing. There you go. What am I trying to tell the particles here? Well, basically simple. It's like you tell a little kid, well, you were born there and stay there. Don't move. Although this is your position, remember this is where you were born, stay. But stay where? Stay your creation. That's it. That's all you're saying. It's like you are uh, reminding the particle where it was born. 
like I said before, sometimes it's not even necessary. But let's try that as a, as a last resort on this problem that we have. So if you hit edit, it's awesome, man. Right? It's like uh, when you take a kid to the doctor, it doesn't doesn't do the doesn't do the the thing that was sick, or the car to the mechanic. Um, well, I wanted to say I wanted to show you that it was going to be an error here because the the emitter itself is not really telling anything. But let's just try. It. Let's just rewind and hit play. Okay, we have the same thing. It's fine, but it's not erroring up. But basically, at home, probably it will. It will. It won't let you add the attributes. Or if you add the attributes and try to use them, Maya won't know what to do with them. You can see that there's no really change. Nothing. Nothing happened really. You know, and it's not a big waste of time. We're going to use that in a second. But um, basically, make sure, okay, that the emitter is selected, and then you click on this guy. Need parent U and V. Like, like like everything in Maya to optimize it and to make it work faster, then some things are disconnected, other attributes are not being added at the moment until you specifically ask for it. But same thing here. If you don't tell the emitter to give that information, to pass that information onto the particle, it's not going to happen. It's not going to pass it. So the attribute exists, uh, and the expression is valid, but this, the emitter itself is not telling you anything. It doesn't want to tell you where you were born. So as soon as you click on that, 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 informa that information is going to go pass onto the particle. Okay, so let's see the difference. All right, nothing, nothing special, but that is working. So what I'm going to do with that, this information right here, is I'm going to skip over these two things. So instead of me saying, okay, grab a position in U and then take a random position in U and put yourself in there, and then another one in V, it's like telling the kid, okay, well, you know, you find, you know, you go and you born whatever you like. But that's not true, right? You were born in a place. And then if you want to move to that place, that's after. But you, know, you cannot tell the kid, choose whatever you were born because that's not really true. So that's basically what I'm doing here with this expression. I'm just saying, okay, go and place yourself whatever you like in here. These two, right? So I'm going to skip over that. And I'm just going to say, basically, you were born whatever you're parent told you to where you were born in both positions. And let's see what difference does it make. Well, pretty much none at the moment. So we need to keep looking. I'm going to grab my goal offset and I'm going to skip over that. And hey, what do you think? The problem's gone. So, like I said before, it's a combination of things. Now, yes, of course, but we have this little thing here. But as far as it goes in here, if you were to render this effect, okay, using the hardware render, when you get this plane, let me just hide it. These are streaks. I can even go in and amplify the size of the streak. This is covered in detail on the effects power user program, so that's what I'm not talking much about it. There's a tail size attribute, I can increase it. Okay, so you can see that most, you know, pretty much all the problems gone. Yeah, you do get these little guys in here, and you get a long line down here. You see? Now you can actually see it in there. That I know what it is. That is caused because Remember that we're moving particles in this, this direction with a noise function, okay? Well, it is an issue for Maya when the particles reach the end and stay there and try to keep going away. What I mean by that is let's say that this particle is 0.99 in the V direction, or the U direction, I'm sorry. Let me just do things correctly and show you what we're doing, right? We have an expression in goal U, remember that was, is we're adding to this value in U the noise of time. Remember what I talked about about the curve of noise? If not, go back one lesson and then you'll see. Um, so basically what, what is happening here, let's, could, there could be particles that are all really close to the edge in the U direction and then the expression is adding more and they're reaching the end and they cannot let go of the surface. So that could be an issue there. If you're adding and adding and adding, the, the particle is just kind of you know, stretching. We're going to fix that in a minute. That's very simple. But at, at, you know, at the same time, the, most of the problem is gone. There's just a couple of little guys, and I'm forcing the speed in here a lot. So I think that's you know that's going to be a solution. 
Um, but let's fix this problem here. And let's see if maybe that will help us with the other thing. So basically what I don't want, what you never want, you remember how we're killing the particles when they reach the end of the surface with the expression that it is right here. We tend to, we're telling the particles that the position in V is greater than the kill V attribute, which is a, a number that I put really close to one on the locator, then kill them. We should do something else, something similar to the edges. And that's something that probably you don't want to give control to your uh, employer, to your to your boss, like I always say. That is one of the attributes that he doesn't really need to choose. Well, it's up to you. I leave it up to you. You could add an attribute. And if you want an assignment for this lesson, then that will be the case. Add, an, add more attributes and give control over the U position where you want the particles to be born. Right now in V, we're controlling the word they're born before 0.4, somewhere on here. And we also have an expression that tells them to kill them once they go past the user is telling you. So you can control in this direction, the V direction, where the particles are going to be visible. As an assignment, add it yourself to the control. Okay, so that way you can specify an area. I'm going to hard code it because it's faster. I want to move to the next lesson. So what I'm going to do here, because I'm lazy, well, no, let's not be lazy. Let's just say that the goal U of the particle, well, not even goal U, let's say it's a condition, right? If the goal U of the particle, okay, let's say is greater than, let's say, I don't know, anything but 1, 0.98, yeah, then Okay, the lifespan of the particle is zero. Maya took it. It's a runtime expression, meaning that I can go ahead and run it from here if I want to. And you can see that the bottom line is gone. Now I have a line at the top. And this is the same case. Particles are reaching the beginning of the surface. And then because the, the noise function will add and subtract a number sometimes, you know, the curve will go below zero. So if you're adding a negative number, you're subtracting. Uh, they could be the same problem here. So I need to do something similar for the other direction. So I'm going to paste that because, yes, I am lazy now. And I'm going to say that if it's less, okay, then let's say, I don't know, 0 0.05, really close to the edge. Then kill the particles. Yeah, hit play. And the line at the top is gone. Cool. Compromises in life we need to make. Okay, so in this case, um, I can see that the problem is gone. We can try and go back and put back the gold offset. What I mean by compromises, meaning this thing, these guys. It could be because when you when you recreate this effect from scratch at home, do it without the gold offset first and see. Uh, at the moment, I don't get all these crazy, jumpy ones all over the place sideways that I didn't like. So I think for now I'm okay with that. I'm just going to quickly put this tail size back to where it's supposed to be, which is one, two. You can see that this, you know, this is an effect meant to be rendered this way. Yes, we need to think about thickness. And, you know, if mine is going to behave this way with this setup, then we're going to have to use a volume emitter or something else. But let's just, uh, let's not give up. I'm going to grab this. I don't need it. Because basically I'm saying, well, you're born whatever you like, whatever your parent told you to. And then in this expression I'm saying, but if you are in this position, then I'm going to kill you if you're, if you're higher than V. So this is no longer necessary. You can have one or the other. You're using parent U or using a random, whatever, you know, pick one. All right, so... Um, this is good. I also like to do. Um, I can, you could grab these guys and put them on creation if you like. So you can copy this and paste them down here and see the result. So it's just to be safe, just in case uh, any particles are being born on, on that edge there. Also, you don't have particles in being born one frame in that position, the next frame they disappear. So that way, you know, you make sure that they're not there. Right? So just pay, copy and paste it from, from runtime to creation. 
Now we're going to bring back my expression for the gold offset and see if it's doing anything different. Well, you can see that there is a there is an error there. There's definitely something. And like I said, compromises. If you if you need to use gold offset, then you will need to render your points, right? Not use the modern hardware and deal with it. That's just the way it is. Some some techniques are just like that. Um, if you you could try, like I said, try again when you recreate this effect and don't add the gold offset at the beginning and see how that goes. Um, but I think for now this is a, you know, at least it's a good way to explain to you what I will do. And this is exactly what I would do in that situation when I'm using this. Like I said before, I use this on Avatar, on Day the Earth Stood Still, and we're going to use it, actually, when we do the case studies. Um, I used it in pretty much every single film. This this kind of flow on a surface, and it has never been a problem. Yes, I've seen those little streaks before, um, but it's not. I'm never worried about it. But I don't think it's fair for me to just tell you without showing you the steps that I would do to try to solve it. Right? Um, give it a try, and uh, and tell me tell me what you think on the on the on the on the group on the Facebook group. So we think uh, I want to I want to pause here. I want you guys to try yourself. I want you guys to you know bang the, the head against the screen a little bit, and and like I said, tell me what you think after the class. Okay. So with that, I'm gonna pause this lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.